What is up, everyone? Live from my home office. Got my tea ready. Let's talk about Luther. So today's video, we're going to look at Luther's diagnosis of the Catholic Church and then compare his view of the church with the Catholic view. And so the two readings I had you do were excerpts from Luther's uh, To the Christian Nobility of the German Nation and On the Freedom of a Christian. Uh, our first excerpt comes from To the Christian Nobility of the German Nation, where Luther says, the Romanists want to be the only masters of Holy Scripture, although they never learn a thing from the Bible all their life. They assume the sole authority for themselves, and, quite unashamed, they play with words before our very eyes, trying to persuade us that the Pope cannot err in matters of faith, regardless of whether he is righteous or wicked. Yet, they cannot point to a single letter. The most important thing to notice in this excerpt is where Luther puts final authority. He's pushing back against Rome and the Pope claiming that he has the sole authority to interpret scripture in the church. And Luther's argument against this is, nowhere in the Bible do you see the Pope having the only authority for interpreting scripture. And because it's not in the Bible, it must not be true. And this is going to be Luther's number one argument, and we're going to see his view of authority is very simple. The only authority in the Catholic Church should be the Bible. It should not be popes or bishops or anything like that. Essentially, Luther would say, if it's not in Scripture, it is not true. And you can see this uh, in this next excerpt where he says, Therefore, their claim that only the Pope may interpret Scripture is an outrageous fancied fable. They cannot produce a single letter of scripture to maintain the interpretation of scripture or the confirmation of its interpretations belong to the Pope alone. Again, Luther will say, sola scriptura, only scripture is our authority. No people, no bishops, no popes. If it's not scripture, we don't care about it. Our next excerpts, he's talking more about... Um, who the Pope has become. For he says, It should be the Pope's duty to be the most learned in Scripture and the holiest, and to regulate matters which concern the faith and holy life of Christians. The Pope is not a vicar of Christ in heaven, but only of Christ as he walked the earth. Christ needs a vicar in the form of his servant. Right? He's criticizing the Pope because at this time, the Pope has become this huge political figure and has all of this wealth, and there's plenty of corruption. Remember, Luther lives in the shadow of the Avignon Papacy and the Great Western Schism, and there are a number of popes that are just absolutely corrupt. And he's been to Rome. He's seen how bad it is. And what he's saying is the institution is broken. We need a pope who is not acting as a king, but is acting as a servant, as Christ does. But then he says, quote, now the Romanists turn all that upside down. They take the heavenly and kingly form from Christ and give it to the Pope and leave the form of a servant to perish completely. He, meaning the Pope, might almost be the counter-Christ whom the scriptures call Antichrist. These are some very biting words in which he's saying the Pope might actually be an Antichrist. But notice he is writing this to the German nobility, and he's trying to get them riled up to join his cause. Because at this time in the Holy Roman Empire, there's a lot of tension between Rome and the German nobles. Because the German nobles want to have more power over their people, and they see Rome as a threat to this. And so Luther is playing on that tension. But our next letter that we're going to look at is called On the Freedom of a Christian, and Luther wrote that to the Pope himself. Notice the tone changes. He says, Most excellent Leo, I beg you to give me a hearing after I vindicated myself by this letter. And believe me when I say I have never thought ill of you personally, that I am the kind of person who would wish you all good things eternally. I have truly despised your see, the Roman Curia, which, 
however, neither you nor anyone else can deny is more corrupt than any Babylon or Sodom ever was. Right? This is clear. He was in Rome, and everyone knows at this time that the Roman Curia is absolutely broken. Luther continues, All this is clearer than day to all, and the Roman Church, once the holiest of all, has become the most licentious den of thieves, the kingdom of sin, death, and hell. It is so bad that even the Antichrist himself, if he should come, could think of nothing to add to its wickedness. Burn. <laughs> right? Essentially, the Antichrist, Satan himself, uh, couldn't add anything more to the wickedness of Rome. So Luther's not exactly a big fan of what has happened to the institution of the church. And this is why he says, Roman Curia is already lost. To enlarge upon this, I never intended to attack the Roman Curia, but when I saw all efforts to save it were hopeless, I despised it and gave it a bill of divorce. I remember when we broke up the first time, seeing this is it, I've had enough. Right, so this is where Luther is starting to break away from the Catholic Church's institution. We are never Uh, he's starting to disagree with the need for the institution of the church, or at least he's seeing that the Catholic Church's institution is broken beyond repair. Uh, in his mind, there is no way that this institution could be saved. And so he says, the best thing I can do is break away from it and really start anew. And as we saw, he rejects authority of the Pope, of the bishops, of the institution, and he says the sole authority is scripture. And he tells the Pope in this letter that, quote, I acknowledge no fixed rules for the interpretation of the word of God, since the word of God, which teaches freedom in all matters, must not be bound. Right? There is no specific set guidelines to interpreting scripture, because to do so would constrain scripture and possibly lead to its abuse. Then he later says, one thing and only one thing is necessary for Christian life, righteousness and freedom. That one thing is the most holy word of God, the gospel of Christ. So what's the word of God? He says, the word is the gospel of God concerning his son, who was made flesh, suffered, rose from the dead, and was glorified through the spirit who sanctifies. And faith alone is the saving and efficacious use of the word of God. And so what Luther is saying here is he says, you don't need the church. You don't need the institution. Uh, you don't really need all the sacraments. Now, he does keep two sacraments. Um, but he says, the most important thing for a Christian is faith alone. And how do you come to faith? By reading scripture. So here's his view of salvation and the church. For Luther, the Christian is saved by faith alone. Christian is not saved through sacraments. It is not saved through the church. Uh, the Christian is not saved through doing good works. He is saved by believing the scriptures. And so the role of the church changes. Where Luther would say, the church is a collection of sinners. So he says the role of the church is simply to teach scripture. Because scripture is infallible and cannot be corrupted. Like how the Catholic church can be corrupted in Luther's view. And so the job of the church is to recognize that scripture alone is necessary, and traditions, which can be nice, are simply human things and are not necessary. Well, the Catholic Church, as we've seen, has a different view of the church, where the Catholic Church says that the church is more than just a herald preaching scripture. The church is a body. It's more than an institution. It's not just there to preach the word the church is actually the body of Christ. So to become one of the church means to enter into the body of Christ. And the Catholic Church would say that no matter how corrupt the institution gets, that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it is Christ's work, not our work, that makes the church work. And further, the church will disagree with Luther on the view of authority. Where Luther says the only authority is scripture, the Catholic Church will say that the church is equally important as the Bible. 
because the church is the interpreter of the Bible. Luther says the Bible is infallible, and the Catholic Church agrees. But the Catholic Church says just because you have an infallible book doesn't mean all interpretations of it are infallible. And we think back, oh, B. And we think back to uh, the early church where there are disagreements on what was even in the Bible. And the bishops, right, the Catholic Church was the one who got to decide what was even put into the Bible. And so uh, we can see there's a disagreement on salvation and authority. Well, what I want to show you to end this video is that how you view salvation and the role of the church will change your very view of the church and the lowercase c church. And what's interesting is if you look at church architecture, you can see the differences in uh, the views of salvation. Now, I want to caveat this and say that this distinction doesn't work as much anymore because Catholic and non-Catholic churches have started to become more similar in terms of architecture. But what I'm looking at here is more classical uh, church designs. And again, this is not uh, a universal rule. Uh, there are many Catholic churches that now look more like traditionally uh, Protestant churches and vice versa. But if we think about that idea of salvation, we see that the Catholic Church says salvation comes through the church, through sacraments, that we are physical and spiritual things, and so we need physical signs to help us encounter the divine. And so Catholic churches tend to be very ornate, like this one uh, in Dyersville, Iowa, uh, where I lived the first year of my life. You can see the ornateness, and that even if you like zone off in this church, there's still plenty of things that I call holy distractions that still lift your soul up to God. Luther doesn't think any of that stuff is necessary. Right? He says the one thing that's necessary is to hear the word of God. And so if you think hearing the gospel is the most important, you're going to build your church a little different. And so this church is one that a couple of my friends go to back in Des Moines, and it is a Lutheran church. And you can notice that it is built much more like an auditorium. It's built intentionally so that uh, you can hear scripture well and you're really set up to hear the word of God. Whereas the Catholic Church is more about the sacramental life, uh, this Lutheran Church is more about hearing the gospel. I just want to point out that the different view on salvation is changing how you are viewing the church. That if it's only about hearing the word, you don't need all that artwork. Now, of course, there are plenty of Protestant churches that have beautiful artwork, uh, but this is just to kind of give you this idea of how theology actually impacts everyday things such as architecture. So, to wrap up, the Catholic view of salvation is that we encounter God through signs in the physical world, and we are saved by becoming one with Christ in his body, the church. And this is done primarily through the sacraments. Luther, on the other hand, says that salvation comes through hearing the word of God and believing the word of God. And it's not so much about becoming part of a body, rather it is believing in the gospel. So, next video that I'm probably going to try and make in like five minutes is going to be on the Council of Trent and how the Catholic Church responds to Luther's criticisms of it. So I'll potentially see you in like five minutes. Otherwise, stay healthy and stay holy, everyone.